channel. Today's a sad one. It's a record. It's not a record review. It's a. It's an artist review, and it's Wayne Shorter who just passed away uh, after a really extraordinary uh, and long career. Alto saxophone player came out with his first solo album, uh, first album as a band leader that he wrote all the songs on in, I believe it's 1960. Introducing Wayne Shorter, appropriately named. Excellent album. It is, it's actually, uh, more than anything, it's an astonishing, he didn't write all the songs, he wrote all but one of the songs. Mac the Knife is the last song on this album. It's just, it's an extraordinarily realized vision uh, for a first album as a band leader and, and writing all of the songs on there. Absolutely killer. Really amazing, very impressive debut. All through the 60s, he made brilliant records on Blue Note. Uh, his most famous, at least in the audiophile world, is probably Speak No Evil soundtrack. Just delicious, so good, just beautiful melodies. Adam's Apple, another one. This is just really just excellent, excellent stuff. Great melodies, really. There's like a personal touch to his music. You know, compared to the other, the other monsters of jazz, Dizzy and Miles Davis and uh, Coltrane. He never, he, he seemed like he didn't make as big a splash, but his records are every bit as good. His songwriting is absolutely up there with the best ever. Uh, All Seeing Eye, this is a bigger ensemble, a little more intense, um, but also great. Second Genesis, this is a weird repress from the, I think from the 80s, 70s or 80s, 80s, I think. Uh, and for some reason, maybe copyright. Maybe this is an illegal uh, repressing, but it's missing the, the lovely cover that uh, you would find on an original Juju on a, um, on a Cadre Rouge OBI. These are uh, audiophile pressings that are absolutely not good sounding. Um, but all of those are just, they're just all outstanding records. And then he was on one of my absolute all-time favorite records of all time ever, all time of all times, in a silent way, Miles Davis. He is the motherfucking saxophone on this record turning point in in music as far as I'm concerned just a really amazing and important record and then all through the 70s again um, especially in the beginning he was co-founder of uh, Weather Report he and Joe Zalanul uh, founded Weather Report and Wayne Shorter especially in the first handful of records is a very important definitely like co-band leader he he stepped back um later on i mean he was still on the records and still an important musician uh in the records but he was less of a band leader joe zallan will sort of took over that role all through the 70s all the way you know through the through certainly to the mid 80s and then after that he had a another brilliant solo career phantom navigator here just a very cool evocative album cover um, but the the record, I guess, that I wanted to... Uh, so there's a record that of his that I had intended to make a video about. And I didn't do it. And now he's dead. Not that that really makes any difference in terms of making a video about it. Not that he would ever know one way or the other. But um, for some reason, I just never got around to doing it and it's on it's I don't know if this was his the last record he ever released but it is it is in many ways a magnum opus it is it's a monstrous giant project it's a it's a big box set triple vinyl so six sides of music full sides not no filler on this and it comes with a comic book 
so when I first got this a few years ago, uh, I heard about it and I was very excited. Um, and then I, and then I, when I found out it came with a comic book signed by the man himself, the comic book is, is very cool. It's, it's all, the illustrator is, it's all painted. So while it is sequential art, it is really quite lovely. A lot, lots of big painted splash pages, you know, minimal word balloons, um, and narrated, narrating balloons, uh, but really, really lovely. And the music is compared to all of the other Wayne Shorter that I have on record. This is, it's much more exploring, it's sort of pushing the boundaries. I think later in life I read somewhere that he was more into sort of this sort of Buddhism and this sort of universality of things. And this comes through in this music. The, uh, there's a lot, a lot of it, it's probably 50-50 studio and live maybe more even live and there's a there's a joy and a sort of a freedom uh in the live tunes you can hear him uh, talking and even laughing and uh it's a it's a quartet smallish group it is still beautiful it maintains his beautiful sense of melody and composition but in a in a freer way not free jazz it's still it's still tempo still exists throughout the compositions but they're free they they expand to a larger degree they contract to a larger degree they start very small and and hesitant but then build with confidence that really it's it's a trip um it's, prob it's probably his most difficult album that I have, but it's also, uh, for me, it's most his most rewarding. Um, it's a really beautiful thing. I don't know what kind, what versions are, are available now. I know I just, I grabbed this when it was first announced, and that, and that was a few years ago. But it is beautiful, and it is, uh, every time I played it, and I played it all the way through, all six sides today, and um, I feel like I understand a little bit about what Mr. Shorter was trying to do at the very end of his brilliant, truly brilliant career. Beautiful stuff. All of them, all of the stuff is beautiful. If you don't have Miles Davis in a silent way, get it. <laughs> it's, it's such a great album. If you don't have Speak No Evil soundtrack, get it. If you don't have Introducing... Wayne Shorter, they're just, they're really good. They're just great, great, great jazz records from all different tiers, from, you know, hard bop. Some of the stuff gets a little bit modal, the, the Pioneer Fusion stuff with Miles Davis and then with Joe Zalanul and Weather Report, uh, and all the way up to this really just beautiful magnum opus, um, Eminon. Uh, Eminon, which by the way is no name backwards. And I heard he got that from Dizzy Gillespie, another one of my favorite artists. Uh, and the other thing, when I got this and I pulled out the comic book, it made me think of his other, one of his 80s albums, the one that I showed you earlier, Phantom Navigator, because in that, the record sleeve is printed with a, a very cool comic book drawn by Wayne Shorter in 1949, age 15 and 16. It is The Two Worlds, I believe, on that evocative, broken, you were peering through a broken wall, I suppose, there, and here is the star of the show, uh, and um, some rescue happening, some large creatures, some beautiful women. I mean, it's everything, everything you could want um, as a 16-year-old comic book enthusiast. And here he is drawing it himself. Talented guy. I love how personal this is, and and the way that this ties in with Eminon decades later in his career uh including a comic book with that i don't know there's a, there's a there's a wonderful sort of a circular timeless 
quality to his whole body of work. Anyway, highly recommend it. Everything that I have heard uh, from Wayne Shorter is brilliant. A huge number of masterpieces in his discography. Highly recommended. Check it out. Rest in peace. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the next video. Bye.